So esports is not doing well. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and just play the clip. All right, for y'all to be able to see it. This is Sentinel. Sentinels is a you know relatively well-known esports org. And uh, take a look at this. So Sentinels has posted their own offering memorandum. It's pretty crazy news. As you guys can see, they are giving themselves two to three months to survive if they're not able to raise more capital. If you guys don't know, Jesus. they are trying to raise funds equivalent of $1.2 million. In their wow. own statement, they say if the company raises the minimum offering amount and if they're unable to raise additional capital through other means, they anticipate the company will only operate for two to three more months. This is given the fact they are burning almost $700,000 on expenses of player and content creator salaries, staff salaries, and other things every single month. Wow. So even if they raise the max amount, which wow. they want 1.2 million, you can read right below, they still only anticipate surviving four to five more months of operation unless they can find funds from some other means. Actually insane. $700,000 per month across players, staff, creators. I mean, they have some big names, obviously, still underneath their hood. So, Well, they should have made more money off of them. I mean, I don't know what to say. The reality is that um, esports is fucking dying. Like, we saw, um, what was that uh, fucking, that other guy that posts like Jake Lucky does, that hunter guy, what was that org he was a part of? Uh, it was like, is it, G I don't think it was G2, was it? The guard, guard, yeah, the guard. Uh, that they went belly up, right? They were done. And then you saw, uh, Blizzard basically start trying to give people their money back for the Overwatch League. I'm feeling like, and, and then we see this happen, I'm feeling like esports is just not gonna happen. And if it is, it's gonna be in a much more low-key way than it is now now i don't know exactly like what they're doing i have no idea but i think that it's dying like i that's really what i think is it, it's gonna be I, I i think it's dying and i think the reason why is because i don't feel like people make the money back on a lot of these people like uh, sorry that was like super ambiguous uh, i mean like investors and the companies don't make the money back on a lot of these player salaries like they pay somebody a uh, hundred thousand dollars and then they make thirty thousand dollars and there are so many things that are like kind of off limits like culturally inside of esports right so taking player winnings is kind of off limits culturally paying people based off of if they win or not is kind of culturally off limits so there's a lot of things that like these companies kind of can't do that they would make more money with in a way at the same time, it's not friendly to the players, and that's why it's not culturally acceptable. But the problem is that CSGO... So, why is CSGO... Why is CSGO... Esports, why... What... Ooh, what is the difference? God, I wonder. Oh, man. Two reasons, actually. CSGO is like the chess of esports. Counter-Strike is. CS2 is going to be the same thing. Everybody understands Counter-Strike. And because of that, it's been around for so long. In 20 years, I can guarantee you that we're still going to have Counter-Strike tournaments. It's going to be Counter-Strike 3 or pro probably still going to be Counter-Strike 2 at that point. But uh, realistically, it will be. Even, even though, I, I, I do think that, yeah, people are still going to be uh, playing CS and, and excited about that and all of that. So, it, number one, it's very easy to watch, easy to read, easy to understand. So that, that's number one. Number two, the other reason, is because they have gambling sponsors. So I think what's going to end up happening is that a lot of these different companies are going to... And, like, also... The problem is that the esports are controlled. They're not controlled by the orgs. We've learned this from Nintendo. Uh, they're controlled by the company. So the company blocks off Gamba sponsors. They block off um, Vice's sponsors, right? We're talking like OnlyFans, alcohol, uh, fucking uh, gambling, right? They block off the big money 
and then they say, well, you've got to survive without this. Well, I mean, shit. Without hookers and blackjack, it seems like things aren't going very well. So I don't really know what's going to happen with esports personally, but I've thought this for a long time that esports was very, very overvalued. Okay. Uh, like I've seen, you know, for years and years and years, like millions of dollars getting invested into these orgs, into the promise of some point in the future, esports is going to be like conventional sports. And you know what? If you're in South America, that's kind of true. And you know what? If you're in South Korea, that's also kind of true. But we're not in either one of those, are we? And that's the situation that we're in. That's the problem. So it sounds like a bubble. It is. And I think that for so long, there was just investments of money, investments of money, investments of money on some theoretical future return. But at a certain point, the chickens come home to roost and it's been 10 fucking years. And I think you combine this with a globally declining economy. You put that together with this situation. And also like esports too, you got to keep this in mind. Esports go up and down based off of how juiced the game is. So like Valorant is really popular right now, but like Valorant might not be popular in five years. Same with Apex, same with PUBG. Any of these games could like look at, oh, I think Overwatch is the best example. Overwatch is not anywhere near as hype as it used to be. And because of that, sponsors are paying less because less people give a shit about the tournaments and less people give a shit about the tournaments because less people play the game. So there's always a cause and effect. You, you missed Evo? Well, Evo, so think about some big differences with Evo, because you're right. Like there is a competitive gaming community, but I don't think the competitive gaming community can survive on the pomp and circumstance that traditional esports have led people to expect, if that makes sense. So like these like massive fucking multi-million dollar tournaments, these huge franchises that are like $20 million spots, players getting paid high six-figure salaries to compete in this. I just don't think this is a, this is a good thing. Also, look at Evo. Look at what is the biggest difference between something like a fighting game and something like CS or Valorant. I'll tell you what the difference is. It's the fact that you only have to pay one fucking person. You pay one person. So yeah, and, and I think that's the biggest reason. It's a lot easier to pay people. Uh, I, I don't think it's as inflated. It's much more uh, grassroots. And also like the, like the scope of the fighting game community is not even nearly as like, like this, this spectacle of like something like Evo is nothing next to like a like world tournament for like League of Legends or, or like Valorant or um, uh, Dota or something like that, like the or like Overwatch, right? Like the scale is so much higher. And I think that's a good thing. Like the fighting game community from everything that I've seen, it is niche, but it is healthy because it's a niche. And that's the problem is people tried to take esports into the mainstream and the mainstream doesn't give a fuck about what some, some nerd clicking on heads in a video game is doing. They just don't give a fuck. That's just how it is. No team drama, people falling out with each other and leaving, etc. Just one dude playing. Well, I think team drama is a big thing. So I'll tell you another thing that's killing esports. We're going to go to something else. Look at this clip. A slight tap, but Tima one's too good. Pops him. It's 12 to 8. Took a lot to get them there. Shoots him there. <laughs> I wouldn't he... be celebrating like that, mate. A slight tap, but Tima one's too good. And so he uh, it's 12 to... he obviously shoots him, teabags him, and then we get this fucking tweet. Listen to this shit. I think Demon One is an insane player, but stuff like this makes me not want to support him and EG. I guess that's evil geniuses. Uh, I know they don't care, but I'm curious to hear what you guys prefer. Humble players or trash talk and ego type players? This is what I say. This is what Myth said, right? Uh, you need villains to have heroes. Esports needs to embrace their villains more. We wonder why this shit is dying whenever there's zero narrative for people to care about. Now, here's really the truth, okay? I think that we should listen to people like Myth because Myth, Myth is a successful streamer. He knows what it takes to get an audience. He knows what it takes to be successful. 
he know what's, knows what it takes to to get people to watch you. Like, do I really, and this is going to sound like maybe a dick thing to say, but do I really give a fuck about the opinion of somebody who's a commentator in issues of, like, what is entertaining? No, I really don't. Now, in terms of commentating, that's what I would care about. But Myth, obviously, is an expert in this. And why the fuck would you go and watch the Rust server if it wasn't if it wasn't for Myth versus XQC? Yeah, because it's exciting. People like watching that. So this is what I said. I said this, 100% true. Stuff like this is actually entertaining. Call me toxic, but every game ending with nice try GG is boring. I still remember Hydra from StarCraft 2. Why? Because it was entertaining. Leagues run by pussies and paranoid sponsors are killing esports. True. Yes, I did just true myself because I was right. Absolutely. I don't know what these pussies think they're doing. Like, why are you trying to take yourself seriously? This is a fucking video game with light up blue guns that look like Nerf guns that five year olds use. Why are we pretending like this is some like fucking big deal? Who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. It's a video game. Try to have fun. It's entertaining. It's entertainment. Like, like I, I just, it, it's so insane to me that people can't see this. It's a professional game. It's not a professional game. It's a game that people make money on. A professional gives a fuck about being professional. And also, uh, guess what? MMA is professional. They have more drama than anything. Uh, the fucking WWE is professional. They have even more drama than MMA, even though it's scripted. Talk about it's being professional. Oh, okay. Well, then now we can't have any fun. Yeah, well, you know what? They can be professionals, and then uh, sooner or later, they're not going to have a profession. That's what's going to happen. People take it very seriously when money is involved. No, they don't. Who gives a fuck what they think? People are always going to sponsor teams that are going to make money. Like, I'll tell you one thing. If you had a tournament... That's making a hundred thousand. That's getting a hundred thousand concurrence. People are going to sponsor that fucking tournament. They will, because it's going to get. A now, obviously, like if there's people that show up and they're throwing gang signs and saying like racist stuff, there is a line. Of course, there's a line. But teabagging like this is not the fucking line, okay? So yeah, uh, I don't want to see people that have no experience drawing an audience trying to tone police actual entertainment. That's what I fucking think. And if they want to have esports be interesting, you need to let people be interesting. Not little robots that say nice try GG. So pathetic. I hate this shit. That's why no like why would I tune in to watch esports if it's just this shit? Oh, good game, chap. You click the button the right way. Who cares? Personally, hate drama and trash talk because stupid think people think it's the way you live life and you act that way IRL, but more or less, it's whatever. A bag is not toxic. Well, it's not that, like... I mean, stupid people think wrestling is real. Should they not do it? Like, who cares what stupid people think? You can't. Like, what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to base everything that you do off of somebody with a room temperature IQ? If you do that, you're never even going to be able to tell a fucking joke. There's also something about being supportive. Fuck that. Fuck that. Let people do whatever they want. I guarantee you, if you had a league with no rules, people more people would watch it. Guarantee. 100% without a question. I just, I had to talk about this because, like, I just, uh, this was, uh, it was getting my goat. I was just not happy about it. But, uh, yeah, it's really sad to see this happen with Sentinels and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I think that esports, uh, esports needs to have a renaissance and they need to have a come to Jesus moment with like how they monetize themselves and how they uh, how they profit and like what what what's realistic what's not that's really where we're at would you debate someone for the subject I mean what what is there to debate I mean effectively like this is an opinion right uh, like what, they're gonna like they're gonna say it's bad. Why is it bad? Is because sponsors will leave? Okay, well sponsors are gonna leave anyway because you're not getting any views. So that's not true. Uh like what else is there to say? Yeah, there's nothing to debate. Now there are people also, keep in mind, this is a this is a a matter of taste. So there are people out there, I think they're pussies, but they don't like this kind of stuff. And they're not wrong for not liking it. 
This is their own opinion. They're entitled to their opinion, even, and I'm entitled to my opinion, they're pussies for having their opinion, but they're still entitled to their opinion. So yeah, sure. I mean, I understand that not everybody agrees with me. Yeah, I, I just think this would be better in the long run. Uh, games and esports problematic because only bring people who knows what's going on in there. Well, that's why CS is so good. That's why Rocket League is so good. That's why Street Fighter VI is so good. If I see somebody play Street Fighter VI, I know who's I know who's winning. Right? It's obvious. See, the point it's not just about having viewers. For example, we have women's sports, not just for the views. I mean, women's sports is a whole different situation. But at the end of the day, like, it, it's not about, it is just about, the, for me, in my opinion, I think if you're not getting the views, nothing else matters. If you're not bringing home the bacon, you're not getting people excited to watch your games, what the fuck are you doing? Throw it in the trash, start over, stop doing it. That's what I think. So if you got people that aren't showing up, people that don't care, then why is it happening anyway? 10 salary is single-handedly bankrupting Sentinels. I think that like a lot of the players, like especially, here's the thing, is that player salaries are not a problem if the person is a content creator. The problem with player salaries is whenever the person doesn't create content and doesn't promote the brand. Like for example, Tarek, Tens, like a lot of these guys that are part of Sentinels, bro, Sentinels is getting all, oh, they're getting everything out of them, right? Because like I think of them, I think of Sentinels. But you've got to get your people out there playing. You've got to get them making content. You can't just have them playing games by themselves doing scrims. It doesn't matter, oh, it makes you better. Yeah, it makes you better at the game, but how is that making any money? Which pro isn't a content creator these days? Exactly. You see more and more people doing that, and that's what it has to be. Is this a good or a bad thing for video games? I think that it's mainly agnostic. It doesn't really matter that much. Tarek gets more views on his watch parties than the official channels because people like hearing a... Like, that's... Yeah, exactly. 39 death, bankrupting Sentinels. I mean, again, they're always going to have... Like, there's to me different things like this. I mean, fuck. I'm just saying, like, paying content creators, like, you got you got to find a way to get something out of them. And if you can't monetize people correctly, then that's a problem. I know the solution. I'm gonna draw you guys a graph of the solution, okay? And then we're gonna finish this. Give me a minute, guys. This is how to save esports right here. This is it. This is what we have. This is why CSGO is doing well. This is what they need to do. You understand? And if they can't do this, I'm very concerned for the future of esports. That's where the money is. That's what real sports does.